Hi there, welcome. By now we're all familiar with Creality K1 and K1 Max. In my opinion, great affordable Corex white printers, but there's been one thing bugging me, and that is nozzle changing on these printers. They're incredibly annoying due to the structure of the hot end and particularly the nozzle sock. Today I'll show you how I made a very simple upgrade to fit E3D Revo nozzles, which allow for easy cold nozzle swaps, improved reliability through an integrated heat break, and a vast range of compatible nozzles. All of this using a pre-existing Creality Sprite upgrade kit with a slight modification. I will also share performance comparisons between the stock hot end and E3D at the end of the video. Now onto the installation. First, retract any filament from the hot end, turn off the printer and unplug it. We'll need to take out the existing hot end. To do so, you'll just need two sizes of hex bits. Now I'll take off the fan shroud that's held up by two screws on either side. Push the cable out of the way and lift it up. Unplug the fan connector. The first time, it'll be stuck on quite hard, so be careful. Go to the back of the printer and unscrew the grub screw holding in the heat break. It doesn't need to come out all the way. Now from the front, remove the silicon sock. This is what I was talking about. It is incredibly fiddly. First time genuinely took me forever. The hot end is held in place by two long screws on either side, so just remove them using the other hex bit. Now it is free to come out. You need to unplug the thermistor and the heater connectors from the board. Again, doing so will be quite fiddly, so hold onto the board to avoid damaging anything. To install Revo, there's one slight modification that needs to be done. The thermistor cable on the Revo heater core uses a different connector, so soldering will be necessary. Either cut off the end part of the cable from the stock Creality hot end, or do what I just did and buy a connector from Amazon. If you have the right crimping tool, you can also do the connector yourself. I cut the cables, stripped the ends, added some shrink tubes, and proceeded to solder the cables together. It doesn't matter which way around, there's no positive or negative. Now do excuse my horrible soldering, I couldn't set up the camera in a position that would be comfortable for me to work in. Now that the cables are the same, they can be plugged into the toolboard of the K1. To install the new hot end, I found it easier to unscrew the adapter bit from the nozzle and the heater, then insert it and tighten from the back using the same grub screw as before. There's a flat spot on the adapter that needs to face the screw, so keep in mind that it's the only screw holding the hot end, hence why it needs to be solid. Now that the adapter is in, the heater can be attached via the spring and the nozzle can be threaded in and hand tightened. There's no need to heat it up and tighten like you would a traditional nozzle, all thanks to that integrated heat break. I turned on the printer in hopes it would all work, and it did. There's the temperature readings. Here comes the very first ever K1 Revo extrusion. The beauty about the K1 is that the bed leveling is pressure sensitive, so I don't even need to change anything, although it might be a good idea to run those calibrations. I ran some flow rate tests to see how Revo performs against the standard K1 nozzle. I knew straight away that the performance figures were going to be nowhere close to the original nozzle, as the standard K1 is comparable to a Volcano nozzle. Meanwhile, Revo is shorter and in turn has a smaller melt zone. I ran ESUN PLA+, Fibrology PTG, and Fibrology PCABS on the standard nozzle as a benchmark. PTG was surprisingly low. PCABS got incredibly high results on the standard 0.4mm nozzle, but I didn't print any with Revo, as after the first test my entire magnetic surface came detached. Um, so something about this particular test shape resulted in PCABS pulling so hard on the bed that the adhesive itself came loose. I didn't want to try my luck around the second time, so we'll disregard this filament for now. As expected, standard 0.4mm Revo nozzles perform much worse. However, having just the standard 0.4mm nozzle would be doing this upgrade an injustice, as the reason for it is not improved flow rates, but instead the ability to easily change those nozzles around. Hence, I went and swapped it over to a 0.6mm nozzle. Full disclosure, you do need to retract the filament before doing the change. Or you can add an extract G-code to be run at the end of every print inside the slicer settings, which will do it automatically and you could change the nozzles whenever. The flow results were much better with a 0.6 nozzle. I did, however, get some strange surface artifacts, but I suspect that is from me not tweaking pressure advance or attractions or anything at all for that matter. Ideally, all of these need to be calibrated for the new setup and a PID tune to be run. But I just wanted to see how things are as is. From the very start, I did intend to use this setup with a high flow variant of the Revo nozzle. These have special internal geometry which splits the filament inside the nozzle, providing more heat into the filament from the same melt zone length. And the results clearly show an improvement. 
I'm sure that these would have been even more drastic with larger nozzle sizes as they go all the way up to 1.4 millimeters. I have a few projects I want to print using these much larger nozzles, but I haven't got the settings set up correctly, so we'll run all the tests at a later date. You can check out E3D website for their comparisons and flow rates. I also didn't have the 0.4 high flow version, but it's safe to assume it would have done better. The results would have likely looked something like this. So despite severely underperforming versus the stock reality nozzle, I think these flow rates are still very respectable. Default Orca slicer profiles suggest PLA and ABS flow rates of 12 mm cubed a second, while PETG is at 10 mm cubed a second. So clearly the standard Revo nozzles fall within that range too. I usually max out my volumetric flow rate at 20% below the maximum anyway. Higher flow rates become really useful at larger nozzle sizes when you can start pushing seriously large layer lines and layer width. For sizes like 0.4mm, it requires the printer to be run very fast, and I don't usually like going fast as you do end up sacrificing quality. The other way to improve the flow rates further would be to use the E3D 60W heater instead of the standard 40W. However, the 60W one doesn't have the correct reality thermistor, so would require firmware modifications, something I'd like to avoid doing at this stage. Maybe someday. I also wanted to print some carbon fiber filled nylon, so I can easily do that now by changing onto the Obsidian Revo nozzle. I'm lazy, so haven't yet printed anything with it, but pretend like there's a video of it being printed in front of you. Overall, I'm happy that the E3D Revo sprite adapter works in the K1 and requires very small modifications to get the heater core working. I hope that this video has given some of you ideas as it may not even be obvious that it's possible at all to install E3D Revo on the K1, despite it being quite easy. I will publish my performance results and keep them updated once I get to the larger nozzles. If the artifacts were indeed caused by slicer settings, I hope I'll also be able to solve them. The link will be in the description or pinned comment, I haven't yet decided where to post them. If you know anyone who can benefit from this video, any K1 or K1 Max owners who want to simplify their nozzle changing experience, please share this video with them. Thank you, bye.